Thanksgiving is the best American holiday, and we love it. I wanted to give my friends a special treat and have some poem to commemorate it, and I couldn't find one, so I wrote my own. Here it is, the first Thanksgiving. I hope you like it. The first year was over. They'd settled the land. Now Plymouth was home to a small pilgrim band. The good ship Mayflower had long since sailed away as each one prepared for a Thanksgiving day. Governor Bradford had made his decree. All must make ready a festivity. The Lord in his mercy has smiled on our plight. Our harvest is good, and our cause, it is right. Through winter and sickness for all these months past, we've toiled and we've laboured, till now at long last there are crops in the pantry and beer in the keg. So each, as we're able, make ready, I beg. Some men to the woods with musket and snare, for duck, goose and turkey, wild deer and hare. Some to the longboats, with hook, line and reel, for sea bass and cod, or even an eel. Some to the thickets to bring extra wood, for each stove and fireplace in their neighbourhood, and some to fetch trimmings like corn ear and leaf. So each table is set with a cheery motif. The women folk, pounding, made ready the grain from the Indian corn which they found when they came. No butter was churning, no milk in the pail, for they brought no cattle when first under sail. But there was soup in the kettle and flagons of ale. There was peeling and slicing and kneading and baking and mincing and roasting and chopping and grating and sifting and searing and spreading and smearing and wonderful dishes to eat kept appearing. Then barrels upturned with planks on the top made tables they covered with fine linen cloths. All is made ready. The guests then appear Chief Massasoit with braves to the rear. These were the natives whose help they derived, and without their assistance none may have survived. They gave them the corn, which grew better than wheat, and taught them that fish made the crops tall and sweet. After their chief came a proud delegation. It seemed they advanced the whole Wampanoag nation, the pilgrims, astonished, just welcomed them stay and join in the feast they were sharing that day. When all were seated at table and board, Governor Bradford said, Let's praise the Lord. Doffing his hat and with eyes raised to heaven, he gave thanks to God for the blessings he'd given and barely had echoed a solemn Amen. Then the village of Plymouth resounded again. There was sniffing and smiling and clanging and clinking and shouting and passing and eating and drinking till everyone present was filled till replete and gave groans of approval for good things to eat. After the meal there was smoking and toasting and singing and chanting and laughing and boasting and piping and drumming and dancing and reeling and jigging and clapping, a wealth of good feeling. In sooth, for three days there was nothing but cheer, as Christian and heathen gave thanks for the year. They'd crossed the Atlantic, they'd braved the wild seas, faced winter so harsh 
it brought them to their knees. During this time, half their number had perished, but they never lost sight of the quest they all cherished. Their harvest was taken, their labouring done, in 1621. Since then, every year, though the decades roll by, as November days shorten with cloudy grey sky, when warblers and martins have flown toward the ring, and the fields lying fallow are waiting for spring, it is then that we gather on Thanksgiving Day, Surrounded by loved ones, we bow heads and pray, remembering the pilgrims whose struggle and toil won them freedom and justice on this foreign soil. Our tables are laden with turkey and hams, sweet corn and turnips, potatoes and yams, cranberry jelly and stuffing nearby, freshly baked bread, and of course, pumpkin pie. From ocean to ocean, across this great land, from the shores of New England to the tall redwood stand, we pause to forgather with family and friend, and thank God for the goodness. May it never end. Amen.